Good day and welcome to the dining room table. Excuse my voice, I've been traveling and the weather uh, has been messing me up a little bit. But I have my tea and I'm here because I want to bring you the information. This uh, press conference is presented by NYPD Commissioner Jewell, uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adams is there as well, and they are announcing new technology for public safety that NYPD will be using. This is information. This is information. Uh, this is transparency. This is letting us know what is happening in your town. And you want to know these things. You know, if you live in the in, in the city, if you work in the city, if you're a student in the city, if you offer services in the city, if you're thinking about moving to the city, or if you're thinking about if you should move out of the city, all these things uh, within your community, within your, your, your area, you should be paying attention to. So I know the news puts this out. I've, I've read a couple articles, um, but, but I like to hear it from the people's mouth who are saying it because that's, that, that prevents any misunderstanding that you, you hear it, the news takes it and, and they may put, they may put their bias on it or they may not, they don't give you everything. So here we're going to, we're going to go through it so you can see it. Um, the mayor and the commissioner is doing this press conference because they want transparency. They said they want, they want people to know um, what these robots are, uh, why they're there, uh, and, and how they're used and what they're doing. Uh, they don't, I went into the supermarket the other day and there was a robot just walking around the whole supermarket. So I went up to the robot to read the super, to read the robot. And they said, don't mind me, you know, we're just here to give you, you know, better service. I'm sure they're looking for people who may be stealing. If there's any spills on the floor that could be hazardous, they could, they could uh, find those. So it, many things that they would use that for, um, and someone is in the back, you know, uh, uh, watching it. So the mayor came in, he's a tech guy. And from the time he came into office, he's gonna, he's going to go around the world and look for technology. I, I guess they got the money cause these things got to be very expensive, um, and bring them to New York city to make New York city, the quality of life better. So here is this new technology. Uh, some, the, the, the dogs, some of you may have already seen these dogs. There's some places that are already using them. So it looks like this is the first time that um, uh, New York City is getting them. Uh, you know, there's people who say this is too much. These robots, the cameras that are attached to them, like that means you're always being watched. But I'll tell you this, New York City is a city full of cameras. And and I, I think I have a video on it. If not, I will do a video on it. There's a lot of money put aside for cameras for New York City. So if, if, if being among a lot of cameras is an issue for you, then you shouldn't be living in, in New York City. Because that's, that's how, that's how they, the law enforcement solve most of their, their crimes, through the cameras. There's cameras everywhere. They could put the whole camera piece, put the whole thing together and solve the whole thing. You know, this lady had gotten her house broken into it. And, and the police were down the block looking for, for speaking to neighbors about getting, getting um, cameras. And they're like, why? They said, because they'll piece it all the way, all the way to the person's house. So all these added cameras, the mayor, the commissioner, they love it. But there are people who are saying that it's too much and it is too much cameras. Um, and, uh, the mayor basically states he's the mayor, <laughs> you know, so he's making, he's making, uh, these decisions. Uh, I can tell you, uh, I believe it's a dog that, uh, in a hostage, hostage situation, instead of, you know, sending in a human, you send in the robot and, and, and it helps save. That's, I, that's where I have seen it in the news, uh, before. Right. Um, 
Maybe if you have a child who is into uh, robots and technology, maybe, you know, this is something they may want to help build, you know. So you always got to look at, you know, where people are saying things are going, what direction, the direction of the technology. And, you know, do we have any young people around us who, who, who have interest in that? Uh, my son is six years old and he wants to be an uh, engineer. So he's taking robotic classes and electrical classes. So just wanted to touch on all of that. These little robots look like drones with legs. But we're going to get to this video and we're going to hear about these new robots. Good morning. Thank you all for joining us here in Times Square. To safeguard our modern city in a forward-looking world, it is essential that our officers are equipped with the tools, training, and technology necessary to do that job safely and effectively. In the case of the NYPD, this has been true for nearly two centuries. Throughout its history, our department has leveraged the latest available technology and pioneered ways to do our work. Innovations in science and industry have always been reflected in policing, and especially so in the NYPD. Foot patrol to horseback, bicycles to motorcycles, and automobiles to aircraft. Moving forward, yet keeping what works in our toolkit. The NYPD was among the first police departments in the world to implement fingerprinting and mugshots. New York was the first city to widely adopt the 911 call system for emergencies. We realized the potential of computing to store, track, and analyze crime data. From hand-gathered crime data to CompStat, from call boxes to smartphones, the NYPD has always stepped forward. In every era, we have maximized public and officer safety through emerging technology, and that approach continues today. But we know that technology is just a tool and it is only as effective as the person or people using it. There is a human being behind and responsible for every mechanism that we use. That is our approach to any technological implementation, including the public safety tools being introduced today. Today, we are announcing three new policing technologies in New York City. The K-5 autonomous security robot, the SPOT Digidog robot, and the Star Chase GPS attachment system. Both the, tar the Star Chase system and the K5 robot will be deployed as a pilot, which we will discuss further. We want the public to know that the use of these technologies will be transparent, consistent, and always done in collaboration with the people that we serve. And as with every NYPD initiative, we will continuously evaluate their use and impact on our city. Our job is to fight crime and keep people safe. And these tools are significant steps forward in that vital mission. I will now turn it over to Mayor Eric Adams. Um, do I need to talk? <laughs> uh, the, I think the uh, commissioner, uh, she always sees to never cease to amaze me and her clear articulation on what we need to move our uh, police department forward. And, you know, I've stated this from day one, even when I was on the campaign trail, I'm a computer geek. And I believe that technology is here. Uh, we cannot be afraid of it. And as the commissioner stated, uh, transparency is the key. And the two pilots that we are rolling out today to see how they fit in our public safety environment is matched with the DigiDog, a robotic dog that could be used to save lives. It was something that was introduced previously, previously under the previous administration. And a few uh, loud people were opposed to it. And we took a step back. Uh, that is not how I operate. I operate on looking at what's best for the city. And the three we are mentioning today is only the beginning. 
we are looking at uh, the new forms of public safety. I have put Deputy Mayor Banks and our entire Matt Frazier, my chief technology officer. We are scanning the globe on finding technology that would ensure this city is safe for New Yorkers, visitors, and whomever is here in this city. This is the beginning of a series of rollouts we are going to do to show how public safety has transformed itself. And I think the commissioner uh, laid it out uh, correctly. Uh, imagine, imagine the pushback. Uh, when I read about the first time fingerprinting was put in place, 9-11 system was put in place, CompStat was put in place. If we were not willing to move forward and use technology on how to properly keep cities safe, then you will not keep up with those who are doing harmful things to hurt New Yorkers. If it wasn't for our camera system that you see throughout the city, we would not have made the apprehensions on some of the most dangerous people in the city and state. That is the type of technology we need, and there are new versions of that technology that artificial intelligence is allowing us to go even further to properly prevent crimes and apprehend those who are responsible for the crimes. This is the role we must take. And I want to thank uh, the commissioner and her leadership for not allowing us to remain stagnant. We can build a better product in public safety. We want to add to our decrease in crime that you're seeing in this city and how we're making our subway system safe. All of these things are crucial to use the manpower we have, but at the same time, match it with the technology that is available. And so I look forward to the new technology that we are going to roll out under this NYPD on how we keep the people of this city safe. Again, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, your team, for doing an amazing job. Chief Madrid. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. So the first uh, item that we will roll out is the K-5 Autonomous Security Robot. And just to tell you a little bit about this technology, it'll provide an alternative additional, uh, it'll uh, add additional patrol into confined areas, indoor and outdoor, such as transit facilities. The K-5 uses audit artificial intelligence to provide real-time incident notifications to first responders. The K-5 has been used by law enforcement agencies, including the Huntington Park Police, college campuses throughout this country, corporation shopping malls and other places where it needed security and uh, uh, additional deterrence of crime was needed. The K-5, this is a leased uh, piece of technology. We do not own this technology. Uh, we're in agreement to use just one for now as a pilot. And we would like to schedule, uh, start this pilot sometime in the summer, around June of July, to last for approximately six months. And we're looking to initially to deploy it either in Times Square or the subway station. For the first month of this deployment, we will have a human partner along with the, with the uh, artificial uh, intelligence, the device. One of our members from TARU will help uh, monitor it and make sure that it's uh, working properly. And the K-5 uses self-driving uh, technology. It has onboard cameras and sensors is similar to like a, a Roomba, a, a robot vacuum. Uh, the path of the robot is set by our, our members. The robot will patrol that predetermined path until it's deactivated. Uh, the robot does automatically recharge itself when it starts running out of energy. This is a lot of information. You see, when you read the news, you're not getting all this information where he's detailing how it's charged, how it moves, what what is similar to this is why this information is important to you if you have anything to do with new york city you want to hear this information it goes back to a docking station it will refuel for about 10 to 15 minutes 20 minutes and then it'll go back out on patrol and again this k5 robot provides real-time situational awareness and actionable intelligence to first responders and also provides a physical crime deterrence you ready? Yep. Okay. 
administration didn't have a mayor that was a computer <laughs> and that was willing to go where others are not willing to go to keep the city safe. I, I made it clear on the campaign trail. I am going to use technology with transparency to keep this city safe. And others just don't, weren't willing to do that, and I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna beg to differ with you on a few few loud voices like in the bigger dog. Um there were there were many folks in the community that were concerned about the bigger dog. So on the back of this question, what do you do differently this time to kind of calm people's suspicion of the device and and, and reassure them being transparent that it's gonna be used for what it's well uh so let me let me just say the question. Um, how do you make people feel comfortable about uh, the, the device? Um, because, you know, people feel like, you know, you're, you're invading their privacy. You know, they don't know what the purpose of it is. Some people may not know, ever heard of it. That's why they have to bring awareness to it. He did say there will some someone will be walking with it. But people will say, like, well, you know, why is it so close to me? Why is it in this area? What are they looking for? So the, the community definitely has to feel okay about it. First, this is New York, 8.5 million people, 35 million opinions. So no matter what you do, they're going to be pros and cons. We are doing what others didn't do. We're putting it right here in Times Square. We're allowing people to come in and look at a DigiDog and K5 and others. And we're going to bring in community leaders and say, here's the technology that we have. Would you like this in your community? Allow them to talk about it, hear about it, share their, their ideas. And then in those situations where you can't have uh, police officers going inside because it's dangerous. And believe it or not, a lot of people in the community, probably more people in the community will say they want it than people who don't. I sat on a community board. Um, People, people are citizens who want to feel safe and they don't feel they, they welcome uh, the public safety more than the people who don't may not who may feel like it's too much. Uh, you'll see on the community board, you'll see the 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 people who come out and will say, yes, I, I feel I feel good when I when I if I was to see one of those. And I know, you know, it's like I'm getting my own security. I feel safe. So that's why he knows we got a borough president who over um, who overlooked the community would know how people on the community think when they pull the community together. The community welcomes the, the safety, welcomes the extra measures. So that's why he says, put it out to the community and we'll see, we'll see if they want it. And if they want it, then you'll see. And he's pretty sure that they'll say, yeah, they want it. This DigiDog uh, actually de-escalate situations. So this is a great way to use technology. If you have a barricaded suspect, you have someone that's inside a building um, that is armed, instead of sending police officers in there, you send DigiDog inside there. So these are smart ways of using good technologies, but we are rolling it out and giving people the information they need. And there are folks in their communities and they're still a little suspect of it and they say they don't want it, will DigiDog go back to the house? No, DigiDog is out of the pound. DigiDog is now part of the toolkit that we are using. And trust me when I tell you this, if a person has a loved one that is in a hostage situation, they want a DigiDog, a real dog, and anything else they can get to keep their family members safe. We are leaving no stone unturned to protect New Yorkers. Uh, the last question on K5, you know, 
one should do an analysis of per capita public safety. The same Republicans who are coming here talking about the safety in New York where crime is going down, shootings and homicides are going down because of the plan the commission has put in place. Those same districts, crime is increasing per capita. So, you know, I think this is a moment where they should do a reflection in their own demographics. Those same people that are talking about uh, the crime in New York per capita, they are going up. They're increasing. And so uh, why are they here? They should be holding a hearing in their municipalities to deal with the issues there. That's funny. You know, I, no, I clearly think that this is put, in, put on place by uh, Donald Trump campaign committee. You know, listen, this is not about public safety. We're, move, we're trending in the right direction. Their districts are trending in the wrong direction. So they come to New York City. New York City is trending in the, uh, the right direction. Now, it's quite possible that they come into New York to sit down with the commissioner so she can show them some of the things she's doing to bring down the crime so that they don't continue to see the spike in crime. <laughs> <laughs> This is exactly how the one in the supermarket looked. And I, I think it could talk. <laughs> like that. Once we finish with all the two pieces, we're gonna open and let you go actually inside and see the see the, the robot. These companies that make these robots got a pretty nice contract with New York City. I mean, that that must be a big deal. Okay, so they're going to announce, I think, two more. So it's just going to be, we're going to start it off in Times Square, walking around right, so, Times Square. Okay. So the next, the second piece of uh, technology that we're going to display today is the DigiDog. This robot will be able to enter, assess, assist NYPD in tracking and investigating high-risk hazardous situations and locations. This is a tool that will undoubtedly save lives, both of the police and the public. And, and here's DigiDog. Uh, the robot will be remotely controlled only by trained TARU, Technical Assistance and Response Unit officers, and be deployed to assist ESU, our emergency service unit, in hostage negotiations, counterterrorism incidents, and other situations as needed. This will only be deployed at the 
direction of the chief of the department myself. Uh, this is something that's been used with FDNY for the last year, and they've had positive uh, success with it. It has a camera. And we believe that this it, the arms. Dog will help save lives, increase public safety, keep people who are suspects in crime, people who haven't suffering from mental health crisis. It will help them and help us provide better service to them. Yep, we, we, we will be acquiring two of the DigiDogs. No, they're not going to be used for patrol. They're, this is a life-saving device. It's going to be used for hostage situations, bomb threats, counterterrorism situations, things where the best course of action will be to send the DigiDog in first before a human being. Basically, we, put, we spent 750000 but we used forfeiture money. We didn't use uh, regular NYPD funds. It was purchased with forfeiture money. The forfeiture money? No. It's, it, there is never the wrong time for public safety. I can't say that enough. <laughs> There's never the wrong time for public safety. And this is not uh, paying and wasting. This is an investment in our public safety. Uh, I don't want to have a police officer go in a building where there's someone that's dangerous and lose that police officer. There is no dollar amount attached to losing Rivera and Mora. There's no dollar amount attached. And so investment in public safety is what we're doing, and we're being smart in how, we, how we're doing it. There's a camera on there. It provides two-way communication. And, of course, when we have a situation, this is something that, along with Taru, along with the Chief of Special Operations Division, will confer and figure out the best course of action. But as the mayor say, if we have an armed suspect in there or we think we're dealing with some kind of poisonous fumes or hazardous materials, of course, our best option would be to send DigiDog in first, allow for the uh, DigiDog to assess what's going on, and then our experts, our, our emergency service unit, our counterterrorism unit, can then go in after. No, this will this will be real time. They can see well, what's going on through the camera real time. Well, I don't have any example here, and I don't like talking about other municipalities, but we've seen instances where sending in uh, artificial intel intelligence. I think about the incident that happened down in uh, Dallas a few years ago where they used a rubble at to disarm the bomb. That's the one thing that comes to mind right away. And there's other situations that I won't discuss, but I just think it would have been to, to our advantage, to law enforcement's advantage, if they sent in uh, one of the robots first and was able to establish a dialogue to keep the person safe. You know, when we sent our officers in there, the danger that's created for the officers and the suspect, you know, we can't measure that. But with a digi dog, it's going to de-escalate. It's going to give us additional time to work. And then we can make a better plan. We can uh, do a better assessment and get the right resources to help the person. All right, good morning. Our next technology is the Star Chase tr GPS tracking. I want to thank the mayor and the PC for allowing us to pilot this program. It really is a, an investment in public safety. Uh, it'll allow our cops to do our job better, uh, keep them safer, and keep the public safer. Uh, in the last couple of years, you've seen an influx of what we now know as ghost cars, cars with paper plates. 
an increase in stolen cars, and sometimes these cars are being used to commit other crimes. Uh, this device comes in two forms. It comes in a handheld device and a vehicle-mounted device. It discharges a projectile onto the vehicle, which allows us to use GPS to track the vehicle. And while we're doing this, it allows our officers to stay safe, stay safe, limit pursuits, and let the GPS do its job. Just to put a real-time story into this, on Saturday night, we had it deployed with some trained officers. There was a stolen car in Queens. Uh, the car was followed into the Bronx. One of our Bronx units had this device. They utilized this device. The car pulled over. We made the arrest. We took a stolen car off the street. Just important, we kept our officers safe, mitigated the pursuit, and kept the community safe. So hopefully this pilot program goes well, and this is definitely a game, game changer in what we are doing. So when you're ready for the demonstration, we will do so. We're gonna take a couple of questions. Yep. First, and then we're going to move the media over so we can see a demonstration with the police department. Uh, Kimberly Richardson. Uh, with, the, with this mixing with the major question, can the people in the car, the suspects, can you have any They get tried, but it's, it's, a GPS, it's a GPS tracker, and uh, we'll be on top of them by the time they even try to do that. Any other questions? I, So that question was, you know, if they were able to try to take it off the car, but it's a it's a real time GPS tracker that they're putting on these cars when they're in pursuit. Because what could happen is if the police car is chasing the car, the community is unsafe. You know, you, you're chasing through New York City with all these cars and all these pedestrians and all these bikers. Very unsafe. So sometimes they may have to let the person leave. Um they're going to do the demonstration. Let's see. We are not using facial recognition. I'm sorry, facial recognition technology in any of these devices. Good question. Can I say it again? It's, a, it's, a, it's in the pilot phase. All those logistics we worked out after the pilot phase. Yeah, and, and, and keep in mind, it's crucial here. We have a... We have a severe increase in the number of people who attempt to flee stops. Many of them, when they're caught, they have guns in the car, wanted for ser serious crimes. And what we want to do is to mitigate as, as many uh, high-speed chases in the city as possible. And this the technology allows us to do that. Uh, it's a brilliant way of not putting police officers in danger, civilians in danger, danger and apprehend those who are who are responsible. There's a large number of people who flee police officers just about when I uh, uh, speak with the team, uh, they flee in from the police. Often, this technology is going to help uh, alleviate that. So why don't we do the presentation? Yeah.